Hello class, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what to expect in your physiology class. This is mostly for those of you who might have missed the first day of class or the orientation itself because you were having a hard time finding parking or you didn't know where the classroom was. Or maybe you were in attendance and you just, you just didn't listen very well. Anyway, here I am going through it again. The first thing you want to do is log on to Canvas. When you first log on, the dashboard will be shown to you. It, it, at the dashboard, you will see all the courses where the instructor uses a, a Canvas as a learning management system. My dashboard shows the two classes that I am teaching at Saddleback College this semester. Let's go to Human Physiology because that's the one that you are enrolled in. On our home page, you will see links to your lecture units and your lab units. At this time in the semester, only lecture unit one and lab unit one are available to you. The other links will become available to you later in the semester when it is appropriate, when we're actually working on those units. Let's jump to the syllabus page. In the syllabus page, if you follow this link, you'll get the entire syllabus. In the syllabus, it will show you how your grades are weighted. For example, lecture exams and the final together have a weight of 60% on your exam. That means all of them combined, all five, four lecture exams and the cumulative final are worth 12% each. You have two large lab exams that are worth 10% each and you have two minor exams slash quizzes, one on the chem metric osmolality review, that's worth 5%, and later on in the semester, you'll have another 5% quiz slash uh, small exam on EKGs and vector analysis. Also at the end of the syllabus, and <clears throat> what I have copied and pasted here, is a course calendar. In red, you will find all of the due dates <clears throat> for your homework um, for your homework to be submitted. <coughs> Excuse my cough. <clears throat> and once people submit their homework packet on the due date or before the due date, once everyone has submitted it, I will post the answers. I'll show you where you can find that link when I make it available to you in just a moment. Also in red, you'll see when you will have your lecture exams and when you will have your lab exams, even the little ones. Like for example, <clears throat> your chemistry metric system is going to be during week three on February 1st. <clears throat> okay, so there's the calendar of what is due. Now what the calendar is not showing you <clears throat> are when the Physio X assignments will be due. That is when you need to pay attention to the announcement page. <clears throat> On the announcement page, I will tell you when to prepare for a certain wet lab, and I'll explain that in just a moment, and when you should be doing a physio -X. In class and, and also on the announcements page, <clears throat> um, I will remind you when those lab reports need to be submitted. So that is going to be a rolling time frame, and you need to pay attention to the announcements. Oftentimes, we juggle when we do the wet labs, when we do the physio -Xs, depending on if the lab technicians have all the supplies ready. Sometimes there are delay in shipments for our supplies. It happens. <clears throat> and sometimes you all need a little extra help in some of the lecture material, and I might bump back a physio -X here and there. So again, nothing concrete for due dates for those that I can put on the calendar. You have to pay attention to the announcements I say in class and what I post on Canvas under announcements. <clears throat> for example, for week two, I posted <clears throat> that I would like you for this weekend to do Physio X Exercise 12 Activities 3 and 4. <clears throat> Maybe you are still confused over Physio X workbook. You can either purchase the workbook, but please understand do not get a used one. You, If you purchase the workbook, there is a scratch-off code 
that you're going to enter to gain access to the online content. Or you can go to physiox.com. Let me show you. <clears throat> and at physiox.com, you can buy access. Once you do get access and you create your username and password, you can log on. <clears throat> and you should use Google Chrome when you use PhysioX, especially for your you Apple product users like iPads and MacBooks, etc. <clears throat> you must download the Chrome browser to your computer or iPad. So now I go down to Physio X12. It's the last one in the workbook or online. And you only need to do activity three and four. As you go through activity three and four, it tells you some introductory material. You should pay attention to that. And when you're done reading it, it'll tell you the equipment you are using. That's also very important to pay attention to. And it'll give you a pre-lab quiz. So you keep clicking through this, and at the end, it will save the materials for you as a PDF. It is the PDF files that you will upload to Canvas when I make that assignment available. So when that assignment is available, then and only then you will be able to upload those PDFs to Canvas, sort of like a Dropbox. Okay, so that's physiox.com. Now let's go back <coughs> to our <coughs> announcement that we were going through. And in the announcement, I say, I'm going to talk about that PhysioX on Wednesday. That means to you, you should have that exercise done, activities three and four, in order to get the most out of the discussion I'm going to be having with you. If you do not do it, when I give the overview of what you saw, what you did, why you saw what you saw, what is the importance of it, it will be lost on you because you don't even know what the experiment looked like. You get the idea. If I say I'm going to talk about something, you should be prepared. <clears throat> there is always a chance that I might not get to it depending on how many questions you all have and, and throw my way. Uh, sometimes we run out of time because of the questions students have and that is wonderful. I have all of the PhysioX discussions under YouTube so if we don't have enough time <clears throat> the discussions are all there. Let me show you for the lab where you can find those lab discussions should we run out of time. So I went under lab unit one. Under lab unit ones, one, here you can find some instructions on how to save the PhysioX as a PDF. This is especially important for those of you who might have um, Apple products. <clears throat> it can be a little glitchy. So that's the reason why I assigned PhysioX 12 because we're only doing two experiments, two activities. And if there are any glitches, you're not wasting a huge amount of time. You can also find the entire lab unit one as either a PDF file or <clears throat> as a Word document. You don't need to print these out entirely if you don't want to. <clears throat> I will be posting portions of them of the wet labs. So what do I mean by wet labs? Here are the wet labs that we're going to be doing for unit one. These are labs we do in the classroom together. Physio X exercises you do at home and then you show up to lab prepared to have a conversation with me. <clears throat> also, you will find some PowerPoints that are for lab exam only. These are not applicable to your lecture exam. One that I'll be giving this week is on molecular techniques. Another one in the future week will be on blood typing and hemolytic disease of the newborn. Here you can find a PowerPoint that goes along with the video where I review the chem and math <coughs> and osmolality that is found on pages five through 19 of your lab manual, depending on how you printed it, of course. 
Then down here, you'll find um, a review, a written review for Lab Exam 1. But under this link at my YouTube channel for the playlist for lab videos, you will also find a Lab Exam 1 video file where I tell you what to expect. You also see a separate link if you just want to watch the math and chemistry uh, videos that help you review those pages 5 through 19 in your lab manual that will cover, will be covered, I should say, on your chemistry exam that's coming up on February 1st for this class, spring 2023. Okay, so that's lab. Now let's go back to our home page. And we go to lecture unit one. Now one question I received, and I receive it all the time every semester is, what is for lecture, what is for lab? Because some of you have already noticed that the body fluid compartments is actually found not only in the lecture unit, but also in the lab unit. Well, <clears throat> that's because this PowerPoint is compiled of background material, the body fluid components, and then the review for your math and metric exam. Remember, chemistry is a prereq. So all of that stuff towards the end of the PowerPoint should be stuff that you really technically should already know. But still, we have videos for you to review. The body fluid compartment portion of that video is important for both lecture and lab. That's why you find it in both places. <clears throat> Here you can find your homework packet as a Google Doc if you are one of those people who like to have the Google Doc because it saves everything, very little chance of losing the work that you've done. Over here you can find it as a Word document. When this link for homework answers becomes available, you can click on it and the same homework packet will present itself with the answers. This link is not yet active for you. It will be once everyone turns in their homework by the due date. There is also a Unit 1 study guide. I do not recommend you writing out the answers to the questions on the study guide. It is not meant for that usage. Rather, it is meant for you to use those questions as guiding questions to stimulate conversations with your classmates. Maybe you have a study group. I believe study groups are very effective when the students in a study group agree to a certain lecture that they're going to review. Let's say it's endocrine. Everyone watches the video on their own time before the group meets. Everyone takes their own notes and then the group meets and you go through each slide. You flip through your pages or you go through the slides on your computer and you talk about what you heard. You share your notes. You say, this is what I got from it. This is what I got from it. And then once you're all done, <clears throat> you might want to go through that section in the homework packet together. What do you think the answer is? This is what I think it is. I found that answer on this slide. You could also do that with a study guide. With your group, you go through the questions on the study guide and you have a conversation. In my mind, the only thing you should write down for the study guide is, one, the slide where you think you found the answer to that question, or at least a general answer to the question. And then number two, maybe in the video, <clears throat> you write down the time frame where I'm discussing that very content. That's just my idea. And then down here, you'll see Lecture Unit 1 Readings. Now, some of you have been asking me, do I really need to read these chapters? Do I really need to get the book? You know what? That's, a, that's up to you to decide. Quite frankly, where do you think I get the PowerPoint material? I got it from the book. So in general, I would say you're about 85% secure with getting the content straight from the lecture and the PowerPoint. However, for most of the chapters that are assigned, I have taken annotated notes and I've given the pictures from the textbook. So you can pull up these readings and have a shortened version of it. And then lastly, down here, you can see the link to the YouTube videos <coughs> that go along with these PowerPoints. Okay. Assignments. 
Now, when I roll over my physiology canvas shell from one semester to the next, Canvas does something a little annoying. It tries to predict what the future dates will be for those assignments. Or if I disabled that capability in Canvas, Canvas then says, well, we need a date. So they hold on to the old dates. You'll notice in the assignments that are open to you, I have adjusted the dates. Do not, do not fret over a date like the practice chem exam. Some of you were fretting over it <coughs> saying it's due on this day. It's a practice exam. You get to take it as many times as you want. I have corrected that date, but in future, in the future, with any assignments, when I actually open them, the correct date will be shown. Okay. Well, I think that is about it for the questions that I've been getting. You just need to really give yourself a little bit of patience and, and toggle from the, home, from the home page, that's your start page. Just go through and click on the links and, and just realize eventually you will, eventually you're going to get your groove. It's a little rocky when we first start out because it's overwhelming, absolutely it is. Physiology is the closest, closest um, course that you're going to take to medicine. So it is really important. And we do have a very strong clinical approach to this class at Saddleback College. In the end, we feel that you will appreciate the rigor that we have, the, the content that we delivered to you, and in your future healthcare practices and schooling, you're going to have a much easier time than probably some of your fellow classmates because we will be going into great depth. Okay, that's my overview. If you still have more questions, please ask them when we are in class together again. I always give about five minutes for housekeeping issues. They arise throughout the semester. Okay, I look forward to seeing you again.